time for Trench Talk. I'm your host, Flight of Icarus, with MetalTrenches.com. As always, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. Give us a like. If you enjoy the video or podcast, give us a rating, depending on what platform you're on. We're on YouTube, iTunes, CastBox, and BitChute. Also, hop over to our Patreon, support us there, follow us on social media, and join our mailing list. All that down in the description. All right, so I'm here again with Dan of the Illusory Self and formerly of the Hudson Horror, because sadly the Hudson Horror is not a thing anymore. But uh, yeah, and we're here to talk about Every Time I Die, because we are both huge fans and just thought it would be fun to shoot the shit about their whole discography and maybe kind of rank it at the end. But uh, my first question to you really, though, is, what was the album that was your introduction to Every Time I Die? It was Hot Damn. I remember actually the first moment that I heard them. Yeah, it was a Bolarama off of Hot Damn. I think that might have been mine too. It was, I mean, it was definitely Hot Damn, but I didn't really think about like what was the, the song. Um, That was Mm -hmm. definitely like my first favorite song from them. And I remember watching the music video and that may very well have been my introduction as well. Yeah. For me, it was, um, (laughs) I had this best friend uh, growing up, Max. He's actually still one of my best friends, but he introduced me to them. We would, um, yeah, I I remember it exactly. I was like 16 and, or maybe even 15. And we would like, I would always go to his house. We would sneak out get super baked and then just come back and just whatever music we could rip off the internet we would listen to um and i remember the first time i heard a bolorama i was so confused by the vocals in the (laughs) introverse i was just like what is this guy doing (laughs) yeah it was definitely something i had not quite heard before um especially that song last call to do, do, do it yeah. <laughs> all that weird exactly yeah, yeah very bizarre and i loved it like i definitely uh they they made a good first impression for sure if yeah. people hear noise in the act- background it's because people are freaking like vacuuming here now which was not part of the plan but whatever <laughs> that's okay yeah and then there was um did you ever hear that mashup i think the guy that did them all was called legion of doom and he did he did yeah it's a bolorama mashed up with memphis will be laid to waste and a krs one song that sounds pretty rad i have not heard that and i uh, that is another like favorite song from around this time period too so i would be interested to check that out dude it's a treat (laughs) <laughs> like the rest of the stuff that he did was a lot of it was like emo songs, which, you know, it's all right. But this one in particular is really cool. I will send it to you uh, later. Nice. I hate this city. So I want to go through in order and not get too ahead of ourselves, but I don't have a ton to say about last night in town. Because, again, like I my entry point was Hot Damn and I've, you know, I've I've gone back and visited that album, but it's just not one that I listen to regularly. And I don't know if you have like major thoughts about that one. I'm going to stop you right there. Last Night in Town is perhaps my favorite album by them. Really? OK. Yeah. Do tell. It, oh, my God. It's just like. So when you had told me that you wanted to kind of go through these. I was listening to them in terms of, cause like, of course I have my favorites on every one. And like, just like, if you're saying like to rate them all, just to me, it's like, okay. Like the full scope of it is from like an a plus to like an a minus. Like they're yeah. all like, we're, you know what I mean? Yeah, like we're going to get into that. And I, I definitely agree with you. Um, but yeah, like last night in town, like, so I had heard hot damn first, And I was like, this is really cool. And then when I heard Last Night in Town, I was like, this is like exactly what angry teenage me was looking for. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's just like the uh, yeah, dude, just the whole friggin thing. Like, I'm I'm surprised that you 
have the opinion you do, actually. I don't dislike oh. it. I just don't have much of an opinion on it. I probably just need to listen to it some more. But of all of the albums, that's the one I have listened to the least. So are, okay. you, what are your favorite tracks on it? I don't know. I mean, what really sold me on it was, of course, Logic of Crocodiles, which was like the hit off of that. But um, I don't know. I really, really dug how... Uh, the previous track on that enter without knocking and notify the police is like, it's basically taking a section of logic of crocodiles and they riff on it for like a whole track. And then they go into, you know, this song that's like, I don't know, I guess it's like, um, you know, it's like the high point of the album. And, and then that kind of play, they, they like reference the, the riff of the pre of that previous song. And, I don't know. I just thought it was so cool and, and just like such a cool thing to do. Yeah. Um, I love that. I really, I love them all, man. Punch drunk, punch rock romance was one I really liked when I first heard it. Um, but as soon as, yeah, emergency broadcast syndrome, I think they still play that one sometimes, but as soon as that hits, I was just like, I just get so into it. And actually when I was listening to the whole disc- discography a few times, when you said you wanted to talk about it and yeah. I specifically did not listen to hot damn and last night down because as soon as I turn on either of those albums, it's just, it's all I want to listen to. <laughs> it, it was cool. Like, I mean, hot damn is the one I've probably listened to the most because, you know, it came out in 2003. That was like prime time, me getting into metalcore and everything from Norma Jean to Every Time I Die to Converge, whatever. And I remember I picked this up at like a local record store that still had like the headphones where you could listen to everything. And I just probably burned the heck out of this one. And it was cool though, like going back now, like I've listened to it obviously a lot over the years, but it had been a little while since I had like listened to it all the way through again. And it just has so much staying power. Like, I kind of assumed that, like, you know, I'm in my 30s now. I'm not sure how relatable this is going to be. But no, man, I just, like, got transported right back to that time. And there's not a bad song on this album. There's not even, like, a meh song on this album. Like, they're all good. Are you talking about Hot Damn or Last Night? Hot Hot Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Before we depart from Last Night in Town, I do want to say that in the context of their entire discography, I think it's the one that sounds the least like them. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is. It's interesting because it, yeah, it doesn't have as much of that. I always refer to these guys as like Southern fried hardcore. That's like my little like genre (laughs) tag for them. And this has probably the least, some of the least of that kind of Southern fried piece of it. It's much more kind of standard for that early 2000s. And ironically, too, um, uh, the song I least liked back in the day on Hot Damn was probably the most kind of Southern fried song on the album, which is I've Been Gone a Long Time. I did not like that song originally, but over the years, like... Not only do I love that song, but it's become like a big part of why I like this band to begin with. Like that's sort of like a foundational element that without it, they're just kind of another another band among many. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm looking at the track listing now and hot damn. I just I love all of it. I actually so um, strong. It's so funny. One of um, my buddy, I have this buddy, Corey, he's a he's a tattoo artist here uh, in New York, and he has he has a tattoo that says savor it, of course, from um... <laughs> savor it, savor it, yeah, yeah. Savor it. Yeah. And that's another thing not the, about the band in general, but especially I want to say especially this album, but we're going to get into a lot of moments throughout the discography. I guess it is about the band like they're just so good at like doing those earworm moments that like it's stuck in your brain. Like I can, yeah. I can name for like any, like, like just happened right there. Like you can just throw something out, like a simple quotation. You're not even talking about like what the riff sounds like at that moment, but it just immediately plays back in my head. <laughs> yeah. I love it. How like the lyrics, it's like, 
I don't know. It's sometimes it's like the most introspective, like philosophical stuff I've heard. But at the same time, it's also like a drunk homeless yeah. guy. <laughs> this is goofy yeah. as fuck. But like, yeah, yeah. Also, I, yeah, that's a good way to put it. There's a lot but, of that. Uh, I was going to say, so my buddy that has the off Broadway tattoo, actually, I got a tattoo and in it, it says, I'll meet you overboard from, <laughs> uh, yeah, Godspeed us to see. And it's yeah. just like, there's just so many, like, there's so many just, like you said, earworm sections and just, yeah. just quotable, quotable stuff yeah. that just sticks with you. Yeah. It's, it's like the. They're like the Seinfeld of metalcore. <laughs> like just so many, I'm... so many quotable moments and like taglines. Perfect for you know little, just uh, banners and great for merch too. Like I mean maybe that's part of like I mean they have the whole package. That's what's so important. Like they have a personality. They've got great lyrics and the lyrics are it's, they stick with you. So it's easy to put stuff on like a T-shirt or a bumper sticker or a tattoo and uh it, it adds like an extra layer of your engagement with it i think it's also it's just why they're so accessible you know they have yeah. such like some songs are just so heavy but it's like they can tour with like pop bands essentially yeah. uh just because it's like you know you have you know they can do sets that are complete like you know southern fried like rock and fun or something that's like you know, essentially just like really heavy metalcore. Yeah. They, they've got a really broad wake in that way. And it kind of brings me back to that music video for a bowl of Rama again, too. Like it's so perfect that like, yeah, you kind of could play this music in like a roller rink while people are just like skating around. Like it's, it's bizarre that that seems to fit, but like, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's great. Yeah. It's, it's just fun. And I think, I'm going to say, because I love the cover of this album, I'm pretty sure Jacob Bannon did this one. Really? I think so, yeah. I did not know that. It's so simple. But that is, and when we get into, from Parts Unknown, I feel like any time Converge is involved in any capacity, oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, it we'll brings get out there. the best. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get there. And speaking of which, we probably will be here all night if we don't move on. You got me right where you wanted me So what do we do if I can't hold the bomb for too long? Do we sh- 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 shoot again? I would just want to say that Gutter Phenomenon is my last place album for them. Really? Yes. You know, I've heard other people say that. But it's shocking to me because this is another one of my favorites. Like, dude, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at it in my iTunes now, and I'm, I'm religious and OCD about like starring everything and harding things, and like an, an easy way for me to visually track, you know, what my favorites are and what I want to put into playlists. And every song on here, except for Easy Tiger, is five stars, and uh, almost every track is harded. Like they they all went into the playlist, uh, especially this has one of my favorite all time tracks. Period, which is Apocalypse Now and Then. I love it's a good the, song. I love the lyrics to it. I love how anthemic it is. I love how kind of like self deprecating it is, and just um, that's another thing I really liked about that like Callous Dowboys album this year was there was a lot of that coming out in that album like that kind of like poking fun at themselves and that song the song Apoc- Apocalypse Now and Then is like all about uh you know like writing a pop song basically like did we write the did we bait the right hook to get your attention mm-hmm. you need a little more like all that stuff I can't help but like smile and laugh but also like bang my head to that song and it's the perfect opener for this album i can i mean i can get that this is um it's actually my wife's favorite album by them um but i do i remember because i think i was in college by the time this came out yep and just like loving um like loving last night in town loving hot Hot Damn. damn and then this was um this was like right after the melissa cross vocal dvd came out and they did it with like you know, every time I die, Mad Ball, Lamb of God, 
And uh, so this is like when uh, Keith Buckley like learned how to sing, right? I guess. Yeah, vocal. And so, very like, big vocal leap on this album from Hot Damn. That's for sure. Yeah, and I just I don't know, man. I just I wasn't ready for it. And so I will agree with you in terms of back then, because I think you, what you're describing is very much the way I felt when they first dropped the new black as the lead single. And I was pretty stoked about it too. Cause they've got like Michael Madsen in the music video. And I was big into music, like, it's such a great music video. <laughs> I was big into <laughs> kill bill at that time too. So I was like, yeah, fucking Michael Madsen's in the music video. That's sick. And then I heard the song and I was kind of like, eh, I don't know about this. And, and now it, again to now today uh i love that song and this whole album but back then i was feeling like i wanted more hot damn and this is definitely not more hot damn like this is a very different album and they definitely stepped up the kind of southern elements on it and Mm -hmm. yeah i wasn't super into that back then but coming back to it again especially when i was you know going through all these again and listening to them on repeat this was one that I was just like, yeah, like, I, I love this more than I ever have. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. And yeah, um, I love, yeah, I just, I I do, I love, you know, the music video and the, just the way that they act. And actually, when I, I went to college in Geneseo, which is like pretty close to Buffalo. Um, so it was definitely, I don't oh, yeah, know, I'm being not even up thinking there. about that. Yeah, you have extra context for this, you know, being yeah, in that area. So, and it, it's kind of like well, Buffalo is like kind of like a rundown city, but that whole like upstate New York is essentially like the deep South, but like really cold. Mm. Um, so it's just kind of like, like the, I feel like that, I don't know, the Southern like Rocky stuff. It's not, it's like, it's not like, like a put on, like, it's kind of like, that's like kind of how it is up there. Huh. That always interests me too about them. Cause I'm like, what's a bunch of, guys from like you know the new england area doing kind of arkansas tennessee louisiana kind of thing like uh, upstate new york is like its own animal man like it's not new england it's not like downstate new york city it's like it's like the south but huh. everything is cold <laughs> <laughs> so and, basically uh, the music yeah, video spent, spent from a lot of time um, out there and the music video from map change basic basically it's what you're describing <laughs> well i mean yeah that's literally just yeah. that's like this is buffalo yeah i love the big dirty all right when, so let's, uh, let's yeah, go to that one... so 2007 the big dirty i love that cover too just got a certain charm to I it. I mean, all the covers are so great because they're they're all like they're all pretty unique, and they I think that they nail it every time. I love their logo too. Like it's simple, but that stylized eye just makes it. And again, it's something that's really easy to slap on merch, and it stands out. You see it, you instantly know what it is. And yeah, and mm-hmm. yeah, so many things about it. But yeah, this album, oh, man, this is where like a lot of these tracks lyrically like i see this is the thing though like there's fewer of my favorite tracks on this album but it's still one that's like top consistency like a lot of five star tracks for me here not as many hearts if i can like put it in that terminology but the ones that i really do love i love to death i, I think love that's- Go ahead. It's like the most millennial thing you've ever. I, <laughs> I know, right? That, I, as I was saying said. it too, I was kind of disgusted with myself. But that's like the easiest way <laughs> I can kind of put it into words. Oh, that's terrible. I'm an elder millennial, though. I, I've embraced that title. <laughs> but, oh yeah, I think you got, uh, something say goes back to eighty three, eighty five. But yeah, um, unfortunately. Anyway, I digress. Yeah. Tell me about the tracks. Man, fucking pigs is pigs werewolf in rehab is one of my all-time favorites um i actually yep. added to my top tracks uh imitation is the sincerest form of battery which i had previously not had included in in my list of favorites on this one but when i went back and listened to it i was like 
man, I was sleeping on this track. Like this is a this is a fucking banger right here. Uh, and a lot of those yeah. great lyrical moments again coming up here. <laughs> I would say um, I agree with all of that. The only one I think is missing is a gentleman's sport. That's like one of my favorite every time I die tracks. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. It comes right after uh, one of my uh, least hey. favorite tracks, uh, Rendezvous, or Rendezvous Do, I should say. Uh, Is that the one that's like, it starts with a guitar by itself? Like, dan and did and 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 Or is that I, something I'm, else? I'm forgetting now. But I, it's such a blur of like, I've been listening to all these albums and they're starting to run together again. But that one, like, I particularly Sorry. gave it a lower rating, and obviously, like, it stood out to me as some. There were a couple tracks that came up here and there that were kind of like weird, and like not. I don't know. They just didn't fit. But I don't want to linger on that. Let's let's focus on the ones that we we do remember. <laughs> but what are you? What are your favorite uh like lyric moments on this album? Uh, I think really like uh. I don't know. I, know. I remember just like after being somewhat let down by gutter phenomenon, hearing like no son of mine and it comes in like all heavy. And then just like the hold that pose, mm -hmm. like that part. Like yeah. I thought that that was like really fucking cool. Um, and then, yeah, like a gentleman's sport, man, just for like at the end, like the bring me the tongue thing, like the rest is fat, like that huge breakdown at the end. Um, everything. Actually, yeah, just the lyrics for that song in general, I love. Um, I love, I thought, I don't know, Weir, Wolf, I didn't like that one too much, but as far as like the kind of tongue-in-cheek punny stuff on it, like I thought that they really did a good job on this, like yeah. In Rehab. There's a lot of that's that. Like... That's what I love about In Rehab. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is another so song funny. that like simultaneously makes me just laugh out loud and bang my head at the same time. Like there's not a lot of bands that make me laugh out loud, but this is definitely among that select few. And the jokes never get old for some reason. Like you'd think it would after a while, but every time I, I'm, I'm like looking forward, like I know the punchline, but I'm like excited to hear the punchline and just laugh about it again. And the mm -hmm. whole thing. And then, about, oh, what is uh... that? I sing along too. I tie the devil to the tracks. Can you hear the train coming? So, <laughs> yeah, so good. He really steps up the drawl later I think, on the song uh, too. Yes, I think the lyrics in "Pigs is Pigs" is great too. Like, uh, you know, I'm no good at court ordered goodbyes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. It's kind of like, I don't know. It's just so yeah. It's like it's like you're saying like with like you're laughing at it, but you're banging your head. It's also like it's just there's so many really just like depressing and and just kind of. Yeah, it's just like depressing and or just like negative subject matter, but it's spun into this like tongue in cheek, funny way. Like it's, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's, I don't think that there's anyone else that really yeah. pulls it off. And I feel like a lot of any band that someone showed me that is supposed to sound like every time I die, I don't really get into. Yeah. Like I remember, um, I think it's like, well, except for like he is legend, of course, because they're awesome. They get compared a lot, but hmm. uh, there's some band like Vanna or something that someone showed me. They're like, oh yeah, they're just like every time I die. I was like, nah, man. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot of imitators. Not a lot get it right. There's been a bunch of stuff that uh, Mathcore Index has been recommending from kind of brand new bands that get pretty darn close, but there's like a certain charm that you can't quite imitate. And again, like I think the closest I've seen a band come to it is the Callous Dow Boys, but they've got a completely different take on it. Like they don't sound like they're imitating every time I die. They just happen to have the same sense of humor. Like it's kind of like watching two sh It's kind of like watching <laughs> going back. If I'm going to stick with like the Seinfeld thing, like it's like watching Seinfeld ver versus watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. Like they're like two different shows, but they've got the same sense of humor. That's interesting because I, I liked Curb, and I'm not really a big Seinfeld fan. Maybe maybe you just the time wasn't right. Maybe you got to go back and check maybe. out Seinfeld again. <laughs> oh God, you sound you're not 
the first person to say that to me. I don't think you'll be the last. Yeah, it's a, it's a classic, uh, man. But going back to the album, though, and Pigs is Pigs, like, I use that uh, hang them high or not at all line all the time, too. Like, that's one of my, that's such a sort of, like, cornerstone every time I die lyric that gets quoted all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's a classic. <laughs> Oh, and and I I realized too as I was like mining through the lyrics again here I I missed another one of my favorite moments on Gutter Phenomenon which is on Board Stiff the <laughs> the Hey there girls I'm a cunt <laughs> like that almost stood out to me when they got to that part because like the music breaks out and it's like this weird like awkward moment yeah <sighs> yeah I remember I was like I was kind of like oh that's odd. <laughs> when I heard that, um, and yeah, to to jump back to your yeah your previous statement about rendezvous, um, I have to say I disagree with you. I'm yeah. like I'm looking at the lyrics. It's definitely the song I'm thinking of, and this song kicks ass. Mm. It it's not. It's the, just like it's like it's 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 something it's like about not how a, that song is musically that I don't like. It's kind of like um, it's like definitely like southern rocky like kind of. I don't know. It's just really laid back and kind of uh, almost like waltzy. I don't know yeah, if that's a correct way yeah, to describe well, that, it. But yeah, it... that that is the one, and that's what I don't like about it. Like, I don't want slow, chill, and waltzy from every time I die. I want fucking balls to the wall, which it will become a theme when we get to. We still haven't actually gotten to my favorite album, and and we'll we'll get there. But I I always prefer these guys at full tilt and that song is not full tilt it's it's not doing it for me okay i can yeah. see yeah. that but then it jumps in i mean it jumps in the heavy the heaviest track on the album after it and they've got to have dynamics john yeah that's well, what makes uh, them so great uh, they, well, they yeah, can do I it mean, all they've got plenty of dynamics and and yeah i shouldn't say like i want it like necessary when i say balls to the wall like you know it doesn't always have to be d beat and just like full steam ahead they they have those i guess the better way to put it is it's always got to be aggressive and it can be different types of aggressive it can be passive aggressive it can be biting your throat out aggressive but it just it still needs to have that aggressive edge to it for me i don't <laughs> want it to be like it has chill. to be one it has to be one of the two <laughs> it can be one or the other So, should we fast forward from yeah. 2007 to 2009? Yes, let's do that. And this, and I feel like I'm a rare person to say this, and maybe I'm wrong in that, but I have not met anyone else who says that this is their favorite Every Time I Die album, but this is my favorite Every Time I Die album. I love almost every song on this album, with the uh, exception of Who Invented the Russian Soldier. That's another one that I'm just kind of like not super into but aside from that like this is pretty much hearts across the board to go back to my stupid millennial speak again but <laughs> uh you're super liking this one i love this album super. every single song and that's part of it is because this is a super balls to the wall album like it is just fast and aggressive pretty much the whole way through lots of great lyrics it's just I don't know what what are your thoughts on new junk aesthetic? I don't I mean it's good. I would actually say that this is for me this one is kind of like lost to time like it's this is like one of the less memorable ones for me. It, it, I feel um, like it is kind the, of a forgotten album. Like I don't hear a lot of people in general talk about it for some reason. Yeah. And I mean Roman Holiday like that like what a that great is opener. an awesome opening yeah, track. So yes. Good. It's just like yeah, it's so Oh, it's like bleak, and I love the way the guitars sound on it. Um, it's uh, yeah. Witches, but anyway, tell me, witches, <laughs> that just droning ragman. Oh, so good. <laughs> that open man. All right, so John, tell me why this is the one. Again, it's just like it's consistent. It's so heavy. It is kind of darker, but it has its fun moments too. Like I love Wanderlust. I list, I, I sing along to that song all the time. And I love it's it's yeah. like this portrait of this just like 
kind of despicable person but they're kind of charming in a way and they're just so like self-involved to the point that they're unapologetic about it and there's just something strangely likable in that and so it's just a really it's fun to sing along with just that all the lyrics to that song are <laughs> it's just so good there must be a place yeah. for a wretch like me you know all of this just self-deprecating stuff again which is uh that's becoming a theme now of something i really like about this stuff i'm actually trying I to always look wonder like what i always wonder like what is going on in keith buckley's life yeah when he's like writing this stuff like how much of it is like because i know he like he was like an english major and like I think it like wasn't it it was a break between like one it might have been it was like before or after the big dirty I think he actually became an English teacher for a bit yeah I'd heard um, that. it's one of the ones that there's like a bigger gap in but I always wonder like it like wanderlust like it's like dude is this you or is yeah. this like you know is this your is fantasy yeah. like kind of hypothetical stuff that goes on in your head or are you you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, not it, that it's it, really it's, anyone's business. No, but it is interesting. Like, I, I wonder that a lot about songs like this. Like, is this someone you know? Is it like your darker side? Is it the past you? Uh, you know, what what is that? Right. But the way it's written. I know on. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was just to say, I know on like low teens in particular, it, it, uh, they were like, he was like, yeah, this is what's going on in my life right now. And like a direct result of like real life situations. So I just wonder if that carries back. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But regardless, the way it's written is just so perfect. Like not only are the lyrics just so memorable and fun, despite being kind of like awful, but also the way he puts that like that the added element to it is he puts that poppy spin on how he sings it. Because you look at this paragraph, if you just read it without the inflection, like you know, Lord knows I'm tired, but I won't rest till I'm home. But if my hands find themselves another body, well, you can't blame me for just trying to keep warm. Like, you read that like that, and you're like, that's a really awful sentiment. But then you throw in the, but I, I, I won't rest until I'm home. <laughs> it's just like, it turns yeah, it all around, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> I'm fine with it. This is cool. Ugh. Well, morals are simply a matter of time, that's right? That's right. You just got to... <laughs> put out the right spin on it and let's know it enough uh, yeah i think i think i really liked turtles all the way down on this one i'm um i'm like looking at the lyrics right now as we're talking trying to correlate which is uh which i always like that because i think that um don't they talk about the turtles all the way down in it and i think i was i don't know well yeah there there are that, that's like uh, there are turtles and there are you know we all float down here um so maybe you're connecting those things. Well, no, no, it's it's, it's like um one of these like Eastern, I think it's like uh, Hindu or something. I don't know, but they're saying that you know the Earth is on a turtle. Yeah, they're the, like, like what's God under that? A bigger thing, turtle. Yeah. And it, yeah. Huh. I hadn't even thought about that in know. relation to this song. Maybe you're right. I don't know. I also like um I like host disorder a lot. That's one of my favorites. Again, like just kind of dark subject matter but just made super fun is this the one that has i'm trying to remember too because again all these songs are starting to like run together again because i've been listening to them so much is there like vampire yes yeah 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 my friends are all vampires come to drain and transform i love that line and uh my cancer came knocking it was dressed to the nines <laughs> so i peeled back my skin and i let it come inside uh <laughs> But it won't leave, though the guests have gone. No, it pours a drink and requests another song. That's just, man, that's just perfect. <laughs> it's just like, it's so genius. And so it's simple, but it's so effective. And it's great imagery. Like it conjures so much like like a picture in your head. Um, yeah, it's really like articulate kind of like visual language. Like you can kind of, you can kind of see it, even though it's, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, it's a metaphor because like, yeah, I'd... now I'm actually <laughs> seeing like a big mass of cancer yeah. <laughs> dressed in a nice yeah, suit. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. I'm like literally picturing it. And that's, <laughs> again, like the way it's written plus the inflection like adds that layer of humor to it. Like it brings me back to like a line I say about comedy all the time because I'm a big fan of like dark, edgy comedy. And I forget who said it, but it's like 
sometimes you have to laugh so that you don't cry. And like, that's the way I look at this is it's like, it's a really ugly subject matter, but like he's finding a way to like make it, it's, you're like taking the power away from it. And I think that's so important. Like, I think comedy shouldn't have things that are off limits because then you're giving power to that scary, ugly, ominous thing. Whereas if you can like put it in a clown suit and make it dance for you, it's, it's now like, doesn't have to be this big scary thing anymore it's something that you can kind of come to terms with in a different way making it your bitch that's right dance clown that's right um that was deep yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting deep here well, i guess it's, it's late here too I'm getting loopy getting um, deep and pretentious here yeah uh, i can foresee right. some yeah well that's already. like that's fine <laughs> i mean that's like i think uh i remember like i know every time i die it gets called like frat boy rock frat frat metal sometimes um and i feel like it's just because it does have that uh, it's yeah it does kind of have that like little intellectual twist to it you know it's not like like you're not you know it's not mad ball like it's not <laughs> you know something yeah. like that like yeah like straightforward hardcore it's kind of like witty and yeah it's just like i don't yeah. know i feel like it does well in, in academic environments yeah <laughs> I was, I'm was. i glad you brought that up because I remember I was really surprised when you brought that up to me because I remember, like, this was a couple of years ago now, like, you showed me a meme that was kind of making a joke on that idea that Every Time I Die is seen as kind of this, like, frat boy kind of band. And that really shocked me because I had never heard that before. Like, I didn't have a frame of reference for it, so I didn't even understand the meme and you had to, like, explain it to me. And I was like, what? Because, like, I just had a completely different experience. Yeah. Like, I was nowhere near, like, any frat people, like, at any time. Like, very rarely. And the ones that I knew were not listening to Every Time I Die. They were they were listening to nothing close to this. Um, so that just really, like, I only knew a handful of people that listened to this. And they, they would, most of them, like, despise frat boys. So it was, that was interesting to me. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's just, like, even though it's, it's metal it's hardcore but it's also like it's drinking music like this is this is party music as well you know what i mean especially yeah. like the tinge southern you know the southern fried stuff mm -hmm. is like yeah. it's beer it's beer battered <laughs> yeah the more i think about it the more i get it and also there there's like kind of a funny sort of uh meta way of looking at that too is like because on the surface you could say that stereotypically these frat boys are just hearing the musical side of it and seeing it as good time music. And there is that element to it. But then under the surface, they don't even realize that they're like having a good time and getting drunk to these really sort of dark, depressing <laughs> uh, thematic concepts that, that are coming across here. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, if you're drinking like that, <laughs> yeah, anyway, you, you probably, you like, you know, fuck. the binge drinking and stuff, you kind of, you either have problems or you're sure as hell going to make yourself some. Yeah. So, I don't know, I think it all plays together. But, yeah, like, for me, like, I just feel like, yeah, every time I die is, like, maybe less now. Like, I don't know if it's because the band's older or because I'm older, but it was definitely, like, a college, like, it was, like, college, you know what I mean? Like, mm. you could, like, it's like Animal House music, but for hardcore kids. Yeah. That is the more I think about it, the more that is a good way of putting it, and it's it's cool like how well it ages too. Because again, like I enjoy it just as much as I did back then, but I'm at a different stage in my life, so I'm also like perceiving it differently. And even like some of these lyrics are just so like hauntingly relevant. Like I was just looking through the the closing lines of goddamn kids these days and it sounds very current like it sounds like keith could have written this like yesterday um mm -hmm. i'm assailed by the thoughtless who sing to their own caught in the middle i'm pinned between the egos and the drones pride has been called to arms goddamn kids have grown up to let down all around us are dissonant sounds we're misplaced and will never be found all these kids have grown up to let down. If this is the state of my art, then I secede. <laughs> yeah. That is so Yeah, I guess, you know, it's kind of... 
makes me think of being yes. like a centrist on social media. That's like the personal meaning I, I put into that. And that's another thing I appreciate about their lyrics is that even though Keith has had his moments of being pretty outspoken about his political views, it doesn't really end up uh, annoyingly in the music. It's, I'm sure it's there. I'm sure to him it's there, but he leaves enough of a kind of breathing space for the listener to interpret it their own way that you don't feel like you're being preached to. Like, it's the opposite of, um, <laughs> what's that band that I did the review on where they had the super political album? Stray, Stray, yeah, Stray from, from the path. path. Yeah, and even though I can get down to some Stray from the Path, they do not do that like they are just like here's what we want you to to think and and believe and that aspect of that band annoys me whereas the, this one like oh shit my mic like totally went down i don't even know how long it's been like that yeah that annoys me about them but with with every time i die it's got you've got room to just interpret things how you want to and i think that's important for good music yeah absolutely and i think that you know speaks to the the staying power um and just like you were saying that, you know, the stuff, it's still just as good today as it was, you know, nearly 20 years ago. That's whenever that when that happens with bands, I just feel like I'm like, yes, I'm like, you know, teenage me was not like I wasn't as big of an idiot as I thought I was. Like, I actually <laughs> did have good musical taste. Yeah, that that uh, that had locked down other stuff. Maybe not so great, but oh, <laughs> musically. Yeah musically in a good place yeah all right well we're we're going on here so we better move on to the next one we're moving to 2012 x lives x yes. lives yes this was uh definitely a grower for me um it was that one of it's one of my least listened albums from them and one that i wasn't super hyped about re-listening to because i remembered it as being like not something i particularly enjoyed or that stuck with me it's definitely uh i like it better now and there's a lot of good tracks on here mm -hmm. that i have continued to listen to but also uh, it's kind of an inconsistent album is is what i think okay what um i don't know what are some of the like high points for you uh, underwater bimbos from outer space of course another gr they they, they oh, have a course. great opener on pretty much every album like they definitely have that on lock i mean how better to open your album than i want to be dead with my friends like <laughs> talk about catching your attention and then they've got that chaotic guitar riff and everything um also i suck mm -hmm. blood uh, revival mode and drag king are probably like my top favorites but i also like touch yourself yes. i like holy book of dilemma um there's there's some the high points on here are really high but then there's also some tracks that i'm kind of like they're good i don't dislike them and they're fun but they're not ones that i like want to throw into a like best of every time i die playlist what about you yeah i was gonna say definitely drag king um <laughs> and underwater bimbos it's just it's such an absurd <laughs> song title it's great and it's just it's, it's so, so good it has nothing to do with i think that i remember i was like it was either an interview or something but um keith was talking about how this is like you know they were at that age where everyone is like kind of settling down and you know getting a house and wife and kids and stuff and they were out touring all the time and uh yeah like dead with my friends is basically just doing what we do like going to regular jobs yeah. and you know having a house and stuff like that um it was interesting it's like it's you know it's weird like i guess that you know being the age we're at now and like the people a lot of the bands that were super influential on us are just like a few years older and yeah i don't know i can like I can identify with this stuff where it's like, oh, wow, like, you know, stuff's starting to slow down a bit. And like, mm -hmm. I really like have to kind of like be an adult now. Um, so you're talking about like the stuff speaking to you that that one really speaks to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. As you, I mean, you're going through those stages right now, too. And just wait till you like 
start having kids, some of this music's gonna like punch you in the gut. Like not even necessarily every time I die, but I can think of like a few bands over the past couple of years, like being a dad. Uh, the the lyrics took on a completely different meaning for me, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> like that's a lot heavier now than it was back then. To to kind of acknowledge that. That's exciting. Yeah, they it's, actually it's gave cool, me like, though. yeah, but <laughs> that's cool to look forward to. Um, I always appreciate a change in perspective yeah. or uh, change. Dare I say? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, there, yeah, there you go. But um, but I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I mean, even as I'm just talking about this out loud, um, I hadn't really thought about it, but I think that is part of what helps me, honestly get through all those changes because like you know some of these shifts from you know going from being single to you know living together with a partner and then you know going from just being the two of you being able to do whatever you want whenever to now you got kids and responsibilities like that can be kind of a drag sometimes but I think reframing it in that way and seeing it as like oh what's like what's my new evolution then? Like, how do I integrate that into who I am and how is that going to change how I see things that, you know, I I looked at very differently when I was 16, 17, 18, or even like, you know, 25. How is that different now? And how do you find sort of excitement in that? What sparks joy? (laughs) You know, just using, using. Well, I mean, yeah, like this is like, this stuff is going to, you know, life continues to change and you know i i think that if you're not growing changing as a person you're you are dead you know what i mean like if you're stagnant yeah. in that regard so yeah. i mean you gotta you gotta take what's thrown at you um and then i mean yeah like you can like i don't know if you it's more fun to be like stoked on stuff than you know not like because you gotta <laughs> deal with it either way yeah so yeah. it's like kind of like having a good mindset is is better yeah in my opinion i Uh, i think that's so important like a lot of things are just perspective because like there's a lot of people right now waiting for the world to change for them and the reality is the world doesn't really give a shit about you like then that seems like cold and mean and like a negative perspective but for me that's like my positive mantra like anytime something bad happens and I feel like this ties in, though, with some of the lyrical concepts here, like in also making the clown dance kind of idea again. Like, when bad shit happens, like even really bad stuff, I find comfort in that thought of the universe doesn't give a shit about you. Like, because in a way that sort of depersonalizes it, and it also forces me to be like, well, right. it's up to me then. And then I don't have to sit there and be yeah. miserable about it, because I can sit there all day and blame the world and blame god or other people or whatever but if i i'm literally cutting all that out i'm like telling myself that you can't even go there like that's pointless so what are you gonna do and all that's left is well i guess i gotta think differently about it and i come out of the anxiety or depression and i'm stronger for it man have you ever thought about being a mental health (laughs) have you you ever thought about being a mental health professional the the, the, the counseling is definitely coming out it's funny too because i was literally uh, just talking to a client about uh about some of this stuff and i'm still in that office as i'm recording um because i didn't want to take the time to drive home to do this um, so it's appropriate i'm literally sitting in a counseling office uh <laughs> talking about this stuff but it's every time i die that's really bringing it out man like i i it, it's fun to to talk to you know other people like yourself that are big fans of the same thing and and kind of it's it's allowing me to find a deeper meaning in this band than i even realized that that i had yeah, but, yeah. well i mean this is like this you know this is why we love music and our you know why you're staying late after work to talk about your favorite band because it's just like it's had that much of an impact on you you know yeah. and i think that's what's that's what's beautiful about heavy music in particular like people are not like maybe in past generations, but I don't feel like people are getting stoked and doing podcasts on like Katy Perry. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's, it's people that really get obsessed into it are like, you know, metal fans, hardcore fans. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe I mean, I'm wrong though. No, 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 no. I agree. 
Do you have any other thoughts, particularly on X Lives? It's got a sweet cover. <laughs> it is a pretty rad cover. I'm inter- I was interested too, like what that picture is from, and if it's photoshopped at all, or if that's legitimately just a, a kid in an Every Time I Die shirt going up against the the riot shields. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering, like, how I think that, like you were saying, the despite, um, you know, the outspoken kind of left wing beliefs that I think this is probably the most politicized or at least can be interpreted that way thing that they've done. Yeah, I mean, that cover certainly makes a statement. And I'm also looking at uh, the lyrics for I Suck Blood. And there's even a, a line about, I'd rather be a jealous man than an off-duty cop. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I um, I mean, but I mean, that's that's music rooted in punk, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, yeah, obviously. Like, I get it. Like, that, that never gets to me that much just because it's like, yeah, man, that's been going on forever like that's just a thing <laughs> right right and, and, and it's funny too because my um my brother-in-law is a chicago cop but he's funny though because like he'll jam stuff like this he he'll roll around in his cruiser playing uh like cop killer <laughs> and like nwa stuff he he doesn't give a fuck either like he's like i get it man it's good music like and he'll joke with like the the people he has to talk to on the streets and and stuff about that he's a funny guy well, at least he has a good sense of humor about yeah, it yeah yeah no yeah he's definitely not like he, he's not a dick like he he's a good guy and he does good work and he he doesn't take that stuff too seriously yeah of course <laughs> i mean it's like they're you know they're they're people too there's good and bad batches and you know whatever you do for work or whatever your thoughts are you know yeah but it sounds like sounds like he's pretty cool yeah. so i there's, like that there's, yeah there's good ones out there that's what i've realized over the years i think well not around the time that this album came out but definitely like in that earlier phase of you know hot damn gutter phenomenon like i probably still had some kind of lingering like immature kid think of generalizing groups and falling in with that stuff but that's obviously not the case anymore because that's what happens when you just meet people imagine that you like meet human beings face to face and you're like oh you're a cop oh you're a pastor like oh you're like from this group of people that i had an issue with for a long time and i'm realizing that oh you're a human being and you're kind of cool and you're changing my perspective on on that i mean that's what a lot of the episodes of this podcast have been lately too and people have been interested in that but i'm going off on a big tangent again and how man we're we're already like yeah we're like an hour in too so we got we got to keep going um do you have any thoughts on a uh, revival mode because that's one of my favorite like melodic songs of theirs um I can't recall it right now. That's the one that's like, thanks, Lord, but I don't know. Oh, yes, yes. Advice. Yeah, that's yes. another big um, sing-along one for me. I love that song. Yeah, that's, I don't know if that, oh, I like it when it, like, when it kicks in more. He's like, you know, I got addictions and X, yeah. Y, that stuff. Um, yeah, it's like a whole, yeah. like, it's like a confessional. Yeah. It's got the kind of... It's like a confessional, but also with a... But fuck you, I don't want your forgiveness at the end. That's kind of a recurring theme. Yeah, I oh think. yeah, it's totally. More like... Keith doesn't strike me as the religious type. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah. Um, but let us move to 2000. Yes, yes, we we need to keep moving. We really do. Even though I could probably do like a 6-hour episode on this. No, we're not going to do that. I got to get home to my kids or they're going to be they're going to be wondering if I'm having a wanderlust moment at that point. Oh. Yeah, nope, so, just yeah. an Alex Jones moment. Yeah, no, just <laughs> just being a nerd and recording a podcast, not doing anything particularly exciting. Yeah. <laughs> So anyways, this brings us to 2014, yes? From yes. Parts Unknown. Which I love yeah. this record. It's a this good This is like 
I think what um, New Junk Aesthetic is for you, this is for me. I uh, it's just like oh god, like the with um, Kurt Ballou doing the production, yeah. and it's just like it's so heavy, so good, and even like you know the 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 poppier stuff on it, like um, El Dorado and Decaying with the Boys. Yeah, like mm-hmm. it's just like. Oh, dude, it's so good. Yeah, my, I my think, sorry, go on. My my friend lovingly referred to this album as uh, "Every Time I Converge," and I'm the type of person too that anything I I don't care who the band is. If I find out that Kurt did the production, I'm in. Like, I I probably right. have a good percentage of albums in my collection that that he was had a hand in in some way. He just works this magic especially with bands like this but he he did an excellent job and you can definitely hear his mark all over it especially just in kind of where they went with the guitars and the drums and another very Mm -hmm. fast album i feel like the vocals particularly like he's like really pushing it on the screams Mm -hmm. like you can tell that i don't want to say sometimes it's like i don't know how to put it it's not like dialed in or like phoned in but it's like it kind of is on some of the screams where it's like you can tell it's like the kind of very much like melissa cross like fry screamy type stuff but on this he's like screaming his ass off in some parts yeah and i i appreciate that um i think i remember when it first came out if there's room to move things move was my favorite song on it um upon my recent re-listenings I think it might be Exometrium then going into Thirst. Like if I could Exometrium is a fucking barn burner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's uh man. Well, and, and it's, then, uh, it's perfect too cuz it comes right after More, which is actually one of my favorite songs on the album even though it's completely different and it's probably one of the few songs that well I guess I was going to say it's one of the less aggressive songs, but when it kicks into that second part, Mm -hmm. it is fucking peak aggression there. But I love that just weird kind of like off kilter sort of a melodic piano and his like it it almost sounds like he's purposely not singing perfectly. And I Mm -hmm. like that quality to it. And then all of a sudden the guitar kicks in and he starts screaming just like you're talking about too, like really pushing it over the cliff to, to to quote uh uh this is spinal tap but uh yeah and then th- they roll right into exometrium and it's it's a it's a sight to behold and yeah and like more is like it's kind of like wanderlust where it's like you talking about yourself aren't you <laughs> like you know what i mean it's like dude like you are oh uh, yeah that's so fucking great um and then thirst i think my favorite line on it is like when it slows down to like just a drum and he's like you know they don't love you like i do but i don't know you like them they oh, don't yeah. love you like i do they love you better i know you best it's like dude i'm like i was like in the gym um yesterday listening to it and like i had not listened to this record in a while and that part happened and i was just like fuck like i could i like i could barely 500 pounds (laughs) dude i almost like like yeah like i'm like uh, uh, dude it just gets me so hyped i'm just like jesus christ like i just dude it's just it's just so fucking heavy like they know how to go into a breakdown really well like or like it really is great gym music too like they're they're definitely heavy in my rotation when i'm like lifting weights and stuff it's it's perfect for that you know who goes to gyms john both of us (laughs) and oh frat dudes yeah well and also fucking uh remind me which one of them does like the like wrestling shit now too or is it like two Uh, of them Andy Williams, the guitar player. Yeah, yeah, he's like he's a he's kind of beastly now too. He's got those sick uh, this the mustache too, looking like fucking Wyatt Earp. <laughs> yeah, he definitely like uh, he did his like uh, yeah, he's like Dragon Ball Z transformationed into his final form for sure. Like he does not look like he did when they started the band. 
no not at all like it's it's night and day he's unrecognizable yeah and yeah that's it's just another it's kind of just another reminder of how far these guys have come over the years this album also has some really fun music videos um i think in particular i think decaying with the boys has like the it literally has like a frat party music video doesn't it like everyone's just like drinking so, yeah. and, and it's just like cameras like panning through the house and all the chaos that's going on. Yep. Wasn't there one? All, is it that one that it's like two songs put together? Maybe. I don't remember. I actually, uh, it wasn't until I was revisiting some of these songs that I even realized that they had music videos because I just was sort of out of the loop for whatever reason on a lot of music video stuff when these albums came out. And so I only knew the tracks I didn't know, like the accompanying videos. Like, that's why uh, I didn't discover the map change video until this year. And then everyone's like, oh, man, you're fucking crazy. That's an amazing video. I'm like, yeah, it is. But somehow I, like, didn't even know it w- it existed. So, I don't know. Random I'm thing. I'm trying to I'm trying to look up, like, what? Because I think there was one that was two songs put together. Well, there are a lot of, like, shorter tracks on here. So it would make sense to do that like pretty much every track on here i'm looking at the listing now almost every track is under three minutes with the exception of el dorado old light which is only three minutes and seven seconds so just over and then more is 327 but the longest track is el dorado and that's only four minutes like four minutes 13 seconds which is not by any stretch a long song so this this is one of those like flyby records. I th- if I remember, it doesn't. It's not showing me on the screen that I'm looking right now. But I feel like this album's only like thirty minutes. Yeah, it's it's thirty one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a nice 30, tight 31, 41. That's and part of I its strength. It's, yeah. Well, I mean, that's. I feel like that's Kurt Blue at you know I don't yeah. know how much of an actual like producer role he had in it, but I feel like that's he likes to do that. Yeah. Um. And then El Dorado, I think, was in, it was in some hockey video game. <laughs> really? I could see yep. that. Yep. Yeah. That was, yeah, which is awesome. Because they, dude, they rep um, the Buffalo hockey team oh. so hard. <laughs> I, and, feel, yeah, I feel yeah, like if, uh, if Tony Hawk games were, like, still a thing, I feel like their songs would be all over that, too. That would be a yeah, perfect fit. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> I was thinking about Tony Hawk again the other day because I was just perusing through like a, a discount CD bin and I found Power Man 5000. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh. fucking Tony Hawk, man. Like that was that's what I associate with that uh, Worlds Collide song the most. Right. That was, I mean, those games had great soundtracks. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. They had like Rage Against the Machine. There's like rap records, on, on rap there. songs on there too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, yeah, Citrus yeah. Hill and all that kind of stuff. Great stuff. All right, anything else on this album? Or other mm-hmm. final thoughts on why it's, like, your favorite? Oh, it's not my favorite. Oh, it's but... not your favorite, but it's up there. No, it is It is number three. Number three, okay. But, yeah, no, it's just awesome. It's heavy. <laughs> it's just rad. It's fucking, yeah. Actually, I mean, if that's, like... If I could summarize the review of like everything, it'd be like, it's just awesome. Yeah, it's you know like, they all are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. So that all brings right. us to 2016. I can't believe this album's already three years old. Uh, it seems yeah. like it just came out yesterday, but yeah, low teens. And another just goddamn sick album. Uh, it took it, it was another one that was a bit of a grower, but not like a fast grower. Like this one grew on me very quickly. But uh, my first listen, I had some issues with it, and then it very quickly dissolved with like the second and third listen. <laughs> mm-hmm. And certain tracks were great from the beginning. And I think Map Change is potentially my all-time favorite "Every Time I Die" song. Uh, it's hard to say that because there's so many good ones, but if I think about the one that like just hits me right in the feels and is definitely the best they've ever done at doing like a really emotional, serious, melodic song, 
that's the one like it that, that song not to sound like a total wuss but that song like makes me want to cry every time i listen to it and i'm not even sure why but like just the mood of it it's not even reading the lyrics and even without that really emotional music video uh it's just got this inflection to it that just like makes you feel profoundly sad (laughs) yeah i mean it's uh, they've they just got it right with that one um i think yeah the the high point is definitely the end with the clenched in the jaws of anguish are only godless men like that part um i think from that's I'm getting yeah, goosebumps a, just thinking about it. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, it's a powerful like just statement of a song, and then adding the video to it was really cool because I, I really appreciated it on the level of it's just like, hey, look at all these people, and it's like, yeah, a lot of them are doing like not so great things, but it's almost like a it's not passing judgment on anyone it's just like hey this is this is life and like it's happening different for everyone and like that's that's like it it brings me back to what i was saying before the universe doesn't give a shit about you like (laughs) these people are just living their lives and doing what they can to get by in a lot of different ways yeah i mean it's just like it's super authentic it's like this is just you know this is reality this is you know where we're from this is this is what it's like here um and this is our super catchy song it's very emotional (laughs) yeah to go along with it it's an anthem now what other favorite songs do you have on this one pedal is -hmm. definitely yeah pedal's great yeah like that's the one that i fell in love with on this record um and then i think it's I know that um, I didn't want to join your stupid cult anyway. I think that he, <laughs> yes. I, he was like going to AA <laughs> for a while. Oh, wow. That makes yeah. so much more sense in that context. Yeah. I do love that yeah. line, though. It applies to so many different things. Yeah. I don't and know, it's I another it's, one that. Uh, go ahead. I don't know. I was just going to say that. I think that's just like if we go back to like in rehab and. Uh, just like yeah like all these i feel like there's like a lot of stuff about like not wanting to like he's just like not down with like sobriety or like that whole kind of you know i don't know like loosely faith-based like recovery stuff yeah but yeah this is uh oh yeah dude i remember i saw them uh shit i saw him on halloween like maybe like two, three years ago. Um, and they were like, they played as some other band. It was still ETID, but it was, um, fuck, let me see if I can find it. But the, basically it was like, it was some other string of words. Um, and they were like, they were like bashing AA, like, uh, um, oh, really? the, the, yeah, the guitarist Jordan, uh, Jordan Buckley was like, yeah, he's like, oh, you know, my brother here just got his 30-day coin, and let's drink a beer to him, and, like, all this <laughs> oh, stuff. Geez. Like, uh, um, oh, I gotta find the name of this. <laughs> That's messed up. I don't have a yeah. problem with AA, but I get why people have a problem with AA. Like, I can appreciate it, but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> fine. It was, like, it was actually, it was, it was pretty funny. Oh, and, I'm sure uh, it was. I got to yeah. I just i i gotta find i gotta find the name well, while, while you're looking uh i was just looking at the lyrics of pedal again and that's another su- <laughs> that opened super dark he's like literally just listing things and it's all black <laughs> it has gone black the sky is black the earth the earth is frozen and black the moon is black snow is black her eyes when open are black light is black leads are black the wires that run from them are black stars are black time is black but the thought of death is soft and clean and beautiful and white (laughs) yeah it's insane it's so good it's like a twisted dr seuss book (laughs) uh that's amazing yeah and i i can't find it but i'm pretty sure it was embarking to infinity's door and Mm. like they all like dressed up as like kind of weird like hick guys 
well, I mean, they are kind of weird hick guys, but <laughs> it was like even like more so. Uh, uh, yeah, that was that was a great show. And yeah, this is I mean, it's so what do you think about like, um, are you in the um, the E.T. idiots group? Well, yeah, you, you finally sent me an invite to it because I wasn't aware to it. So I'm in it now. Yeah, they're like always um, they are always bashing people that love map change well fuck them <laughs> yeah I but also say, I don't know. also that group just strikes me as like it's it's not like a a love and group hugs kind of group it's more of a like edgy memes and uh shit on each other kind of group so whatever yeah i was gonna say i don't think like I don't think you qualify for that just because you have been a fan like forever. I would hope so. I mean, I hope I've got some cred. Jesus Christ. I don't... <laughs> I'm, I'm OG, I... man. All the way back to hot damn. That's got to count uh, for something. I don't know, man. You weren't in a fraternity, though. I know. I don't know. It's just not cool enough, man. Ugh. <laughs> oh, whatever. Well, any other thoughts on low teens before we kind of do a sort of overview and ranking and kind of look at them all together no yeah. no i think that covers it yeah i could go on forever like especially with the lyrics like i could just literally like read through a book of the lyrics right now and that would be a good time for me but all right well let's do that then so all right so that's your top my top is hot damn hot but damn. they are okay. both so yeah, for me, All right. and then it would you, be. And then um, you said Parts Unknown was next after that because you said that was your third. Yep. All right, then what? Uh, New Junk Aesthetic, Big Dirty, X Lives, Low Teens. Man, Gutter Phenomenon, Dead Last. That just feels so icky to me. It's okay. it's dude, it's okay. it's in the gutter, man. No, but, <laughs> literally. No, I do phenomenon. and I said I have to stress, man, it's like from A to A yeah, minus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so for me for me, gutter phenomenon is is my top. Um then probably it's so hard though. Probably hot damn and then you honestly God damn right. And then probably gutter phenomenon for me is like three. Wait, I thought um, you just said gutter was one. No, no, no. Uh, or maybe I said it wrong. New junk aesthetic is one. Oh, okay. So new junk, hot damn, uh, gutter phenomenon. Then probably, uh, it's almost in order from there, but not quite. Um, so then, uh, big dirty. Then I think probably parts unknown, low teens, X lives, last night in town. But again, oh. I feel like I need to go back and listen to Last Night in Town more because it's not really getting a fair shake. So keep that I in think mind. It's, uh, that's interesting that like both of our, I don't know, I feel like Gutter's so high for you. And then it's yeah, like we, the opposite we, yeah, yeah, that's Last true. Night in Town. Yeah, we, we, we have some similar ratings, but yeah, those two are like polar opposite. Polar yeah, that's that is interesting. interesting. Yeah. But yeah, otherwise it's kind of comparable but yeah mm -hmm. and, I, and i'm the same as you like i don't think that they have an even mediocre album like it's all like at least a, a b at worst and yeah i mean yeah. they definitely i know they're like living off it full time you know what i mean like this is like this is their career it's how they make their money and they definitely deserve any every cent that they yeah. make they're, they're putting like the they, work in. They don't yeah, have Yeah, it is, it is great stuff. Yeah, they're they're a great band, and I was jealous. My my friend was uh, at a party in Chicago, just like it looked like just like an apartment party, and Keith Buckley was there. They took a picture together. I think they chatted a little bit. I'm like, damn, dude, that'd be pretty cool. I'd be interested to pick that guy's brain because he does seem like a really interesting guy. And interesting enough, too, that even when he does, like, get overly political and it kind of annoys me, it's never enough that I'm just like, well, fuck these guys, I'm writing them off. Like, I don't really do that in general, because I just don't believe in doing that. But 
it's like they're so good and so talented and he he especially as a front man is just so talented and interesting that i'm just like hey man people are human beings and we're gonna disagree on things so that's all right <laughs> well i don't i don't think it i never really noticed it until um jordan buckley's wife went on uh did like that big maga q post oh i didn't even know about that i'm referring particularly to when he went on the tirade on stage about like if you're a Trump supporter, you can basically get the fuck out. I don't remember exactly what he said, yeah, but dude, that was sort it of was, the gist that of was it. Like, that was I. That was I think in response to. I know that there were, like, he had a bunch of or at least one tweet in response to her voicing her like right wing views and like QAnon stuff, and he was like, no, like every time I die, I does not stand for this. Like, and I mean that's you know I don't know I wonder like what's going on behind the scenes there yeah. like, I hope they're all cool because like it's like you know it's his brother's wife too so it's kind of yeah, like it's 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 interesting like yeah again but... i'd be interested to just talk to him about it um if i could ever get him for an interview but i don't know if he'd even want to talk about that particular topic because it probably is pretty personal but yeah, yeah I that i mean that it did one. like and you know me like i'm by <clears throat> i'm by no means a trump supporter but i just don't like the idea of to me a metal show is about getting together with a bunch of misfits who all come from different backgrounds races pol races <laughs> races races religions uh politics what have you and everyone throws on their battle vests and fucking jams out to music and has a good time and none of that shit matters like to me that's what a metal show is about so i don't like the idea of bands kicking out people from from any walk of life and and saying that they're basically not welcome there like to me that's just that's the opposite of metal to me uh this is supposed to be a place that welcomes in people and gives them an opportunity to you know be a part of like a cool family like a cool collective and community that can like rub off on them and be a good influence instead of being like no you're exiled it's like dude that's like that's the complete opposite of like what some of like this music preaches because a lot of these people got into this genre because they felt rejected by like strict catholic parents or they felt exiled by you know living in like a mormon community or you know whatever like usually it's people who already felt exiled from regular society so to turn around and be a fucking hypocrite and do the same thing just rubs me the wrong way but again all that said we're all human beings we all have our moments i'm sure i've had my moments of of being a hypocrite and being an asshole so i'm not going to throw rocks at glass houses but it, that that was a moment that particularly bothered me and i i did a an eye roll that almost caused my eyes to fall out of their sockets <laughs> yeah i mean that's fair i will say though that i think that if you are i don't know i feel like if you were to go like you know if you go to their show regard like whatever political views you have if you're just like absolutely putting it out there like yeah like this is what i'm about like i'm like i don't really want to hang out with that guy at a show anyway you know what i mean what do you mean like if somebody showed up in like a mega hat and was like like yeah well if you could show up like you're dressed for a political rally but you're going to a hardcore show it's like dude like what are you doing no yeah yeah i agree with that if, if you're like seemingly and i want to separate that from like the goat moon patch thing like that to me that's like different because it's like that's just like a part of your attire but yeah if you're showing up in like full garb like you said like you're yeah. showing up to a political rally then it's clear that you want people to respond to exactly that. and yeah and and to me that's kind of the same thing too as as being on stage and and putting people off is it's like dude that's not what we're here for we're here to have a good time and so i agree with you on that it, it can yeah. go in either direction yeah actually dude when i was in school there was like um and i, I did, like i loved every time i die like i still do but like when i was you know younger um and there were just like where we were there were like people that'd be like oh yeah like i grew up with them like they're like that's cool that they're like blowing up 
I'd be like, dude, like, like that meme where he's like, let me in. Like, <laughs> yes, I, 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 like <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Like, oh, uh, man. <laughs> yeah, man. But, yeah, I'm really excited to hear the next record. I think they're working on one, right? It's about time. I mean, it's been three years. I think I heard something and... Yeah, they're due, and I'm always I'm always excited to hear them put out new stuff. But we're we're getting at about an hour and a half here. I know it's late there. I need to. Speaking of you know priorities and life responsibilities, I do need to get home to my kids. So, any final thoughts? Mm, no, it was uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was great talking to you, man. Yeah, man, always always a good time but especially on this topic we'll have to we'll have to do it again and and find another band to do it on and hopefully everybody who listened had a good time too um so i'm just gonna wrap this up another episode of trench talk uh if you enjoyed it please do like it give it a good rating um depending on what platform you're on Check out our Patreon, link in the description. It really helps me cover all the overhead costs to like host all of this stuff and the website and everything. Follow social media, uh, get on the mailing list. But uh, for now, uh, Flood of Icarus and also Dan signing off. And we will see you in the trenches. Peace. <laughs>